It's not true that the conflict of interest laws do not apply to the president. There's one, 18 U.S.C. 208, that doesn't, but there's a whole panoply of others, including the original conflicts of interest law, the emoluments clause of the United States Constitution. So there are many provisions that do apply to the president. The president is not above the law. If Donald Trump does not set up a true blind trust, in other words, get an independent trustee, not a family member, to sell his businesses, he's going to be in violation of a host of conflicts laws, starting with the one in the Constitution, which prohibits him from getting foreign government payments. He's getting those all over the world today. The entire Trump business organization uh, uh, has, uh, uh, in various places, uh, payments coming in from foreign governments, and uh, he is going to have to make absolutely sure that through the entire organization, if he owns it, that on January 20 there is no foreign government money coming in there, or he's going to be in violation of the Constitution. The Emoluments Clause of the Constitution provides that an elected official cannot get foreign government payments. But if the elected official's family is involved in foreign payment streams and the elected official is benefiting because he or she owns a piece of the business is getting the money, then the family is implicated in the violation of the Constitution. His children are accepting foreign government money on his behalf. That certainly would be a violation of the Emoluments Clause. If his children are doing their own business uh, of their own accord with foreign governments, uh, probably not. Uh, but uh, that is uh, something that would have to be interpreted by the House of Representatives because uh, uh, the Constitution envisions that the House of Representatives would enforce the Emoluments Clause and other provisions of the Constitution, if necessary, through impeachment. The largest conflict of interest that uh, Donald Trump faces uh, are the uh, foreign government payments that are flowing to him. He has a vast empire uh, of business dealings all over the world, and these governments have their own interests. He's supposed to represent the interests of the United States. That clash is the biggest conflict he faces. Well, I am very concerned about uh, the uh, many business dealings of the Trump business empire throughout the uh, world uh, with many uh, countries uh, that have very testy relationships with the uh, United States. Uh, certainly Russia, uh, first and foremost. It was a concern that the Founding Fathers envisioned uh, when they drafted the Constitution, and that's why the President has to be a natural-born citizen. We certainly heard a lot about that one over the past couple of years, and why the President and nobody else in the United States government can receive payments from foreign governments. So we need to make absolutely sure that Donald Trump, when he becomes president, is not receiving any money through business dealings with foreign governments, whether it's Russia or anybody else. Donald Trump's kids have said they get a lot of Russian money uh, and there's a lot of Russian involvement in their businesses. Uh, we don't know the full extent because we don't have Donald Trump's taxes, but it's alarming. Well, I think we've heard in the news uh, what Russia has to do with all this, uh, certainly in terms of the, uh, the uh, computer hacking, uh, the fake news, and the attempts uh, to subvert the, uh, uh, the democratic process in the United States. And Russia and the USSR have been uh, at this game for many, many decades. So uh, they've been doing this for many years, appealing to the fringe elements in the United States to destabilize our political system. And uh, it's critically important that the White House uh, not only be independent of that, but thoroughly uh, investigate and ask the intelligence agencies to thoroughly investigate what's going on with respect to Russian or any other subversion inside the United States. The solution to Donald Trump's conflicts is simple. Do what every president has done for the past four decades, get an independent trustee, let the independent trustee sell your businesses, then take the money and reinvest it in investments the president doesn't even know about. We call that a blind trust. 
Donald Trump should do that or the equivalent, just like all his predecessors since the late 70s. The question of the uh, susceptibility of a sitting president to suit was addressed in the Jones v. Clinton Supreme Court case. Civil suits can be brought against a sitting president. Whether there can also be criminal litigation was queued up in the Watergate case. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, fully briefed, but not decided. So there's at least civil litigation exposure for a sitting president and maybe he can be criminally prosecuted. Hopefully, we won't be in a situation in the Trump administration where we have to make this judgment. Well, uh, Donald Trump, uh, throughout the entire campaign and uh, now during this period as president-elect, uh, has been unpredictable. So it's, it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. I'm continuing to hope that he's going to do the right thing. I think it's uh, more likely than not, based on the signals we've had, that uh, the president-elect is not going to go as far as I and other bipartisan experts, both sides of the aisle, want him to do with getting an independent trustee and selling his businesses. If he fails to do that, my prediction is this is an administration that is going to be mired in scandal, in illegality, and uh, bring uh, uh, enormous distraction and disgrace upon itself right away. I hope that Donald Trump will do the right thing and not take those risks.